a sword to outshine all others. Well, this was worth the wait. Thank you, Ibeer. We seem to get stuck in this cycle of trying to find one person or do one thing, complete they one objective, and then getting caught in something else. We have to go complete another objective before we complete the one we were trying to. But to do that one, we need to do something else. And this is definitely an example of it here. In order to find Dandelion, we need to find Doodoo. -doo. But finding Dandelion is only a means to an end to find Siri. Geralt! Dandelion, I know where he is. Where? Dungeons on Temple Isle. That's not a nice jest. No jest, sadly. But don't worry, we'll pull him out. Triss has an idea. All we gotta do is find Dudu. So you must find Dudu in order to find Dandelion, with the aim of ultimately finding Siri? Sounds like an awful lot of searching, but I do wish you luck. Don't have a choice. I gotta meet Horson Jr. He might know something. Take care now. Of course, when you look at the main story of this game, finding Siri is pretty much the main objective of the first half. So, of course, there are going to have to be roadblocks to put in the way of to find out where she is. We're not just going to pick up a quest, find Siri. We're going to run into the city and then find her sitting in some house. There's going to have to be a lot of complications put in the way. And that's what we have here. It's a very common quest structure in a lot of these kinds of games, especially ones that feel like dragging out a long quest line. Now, the main story quest of Finding Siri will take us quite a bit longer, and especially since I'm not focusing on the main quest line while going through this game, I am picking out some side quests here and there to showcase on this series. I'm guessing that if I really wanted to, and I just you. wanted to go in main quest my way through this game, it would take, I don't know, maybe what? 15 hours. Lost your nerve? Not that the actual quest line is that long, but the fact is if you just go and you are just sort of main questing your way through the game, you're going to go run into a situation where you don't have your character leveling up enough, not getting good enough gear or anything like that in order to continue on with the game. You have to go and do some of the side quests, you have to go and find the treasures, all that kind of stuff, in order to get strong enough that you can hear your way through. So even though the main quest line in this game may be closer to like 10 hours, it's really going to take you quite a bit longer in order for you to find your way through it. So let's say 15 hours, maybe like 50% longer than that 10 hours. But that's a very common thing. now. People tend to compare The Witcher 3, in particular, to, say, like the Elder Scrolls series, and by that I mean Oblivion and Skyrim, or the Fallout games, and by that I mean Fallout 3, 4, and New Vegas, stuff like that. Not the older games in the series, even though it's probably true there. Come on! That those games, if you go and main test your way through the game, you can actually complete some of those games pretty quick. Now, I, it's, it's kind of like a problem you get when it comes to a lot of these open-world games. Not so much with The Witcher 3, because it puts some roadblocks in your way. You look but familiar. giving you the ultimate freedom of being able to choose where you go and what you do can lead to some rather unfortunate situations where you miss good parts of the game. Why? Well, simply because in the choices that you made, you went the wrong direction, and you missed a lot of the good stuff. It happens. Greetings. Don't know you, not letting you in, and don't you fucking stand there. Recognize this piece of paper? Uh, fight contract. Good, you can read. So who's this contract made out to? Says, uh, Stenic. Made out to Zdenik. Mm-hmm. I'm Zdenik. Any more questions? <sighs> In you go. Don't you go wandering. Straight to Igor now. Fair enough. I have a cousin who, while playing Fallout 3 in front of me, 
This is after I had already played it, so I knew what he did wrong. Took a left turn as soon as he left the vault, and without ever picking up any of the quests, managed to jump right over half of the main storyline quest of this game, simply because he went straight towards the objective. Not by choice, it just kind of happened. The freedom of choice kind of messed it up for him. I need work. What can you do? Good with a sword. Wouldn't scoff at working as protection. And who here would you protect? Crowds can spin out of control. Somebody's got to keep the peace. Hmm. Claim any kind of experience? I'm a witcher. I kill monsters for coin. Been doing it all my life. Humans won't be a problem. A guard must fight sometimes. But that's not most important. The essential question is, can you control yourself? And can you control a crowd? Been taught how to slow down or speed up my heart rate, how to dilate my pupils and alter my metabolism. My medallion vibrates when danger's near, and I know a few simple spells. Hmm, I'll have to test you. I want to see how you manage in a fight, if you can fight at all. You shall fight in the arena. Survive three bouts, and I'll put you to work. Set me up. Already have. Shall we start right away, or do you need time to prepare? Always prepared. Excellent. Let's see what you're worth. Remember, you fight to the death. The crowd doesn't take kindly to those who spare their foes. Let's do this. Ready your purses! Betting is open! From the Far East, where a man's life is worth less than a cup of water. A witcher, a murderous mutant. His opponent, Gustav Rohn. A man Talking about the kind of common things you can see in these knife. games. These and battle arenas are pretty common. Help, help, you know, kids makes help. sense. Oh, that guy didn't die? <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, it's a common storyline thing where you get caught in this sort of fighting tournament and then somebody turns against you and you gotta fight for your life and all that kind of shit. It's a pretty common thing. In fact, I've been playing through the game, uh, the remake of the game Final Fantasy VII recently and it has something very similar in it. And of course that's there. That Oblivion has that. Fallout 4 has that. Does Fallout 4 have that? I think it does. But this kind of thing tends to be seen a lot. Oh, killed that one. The Witcher wins again! Next fight! The Witcher doing what he does best! Face to face with beasts! In this case, we're not really trapped here. Well, I mean, the doors are locked. We walked in here willingly, and we are just doing something, fighting this, in order to prove that we would be a capable bodyguard for Horse and Junior. You'd think there'd be other ways of doing that, but instead of going in here and fucking up your tournament, but I guess, you know, it's a video game. Where are they going to find these? I mean, I get that they're, they're wyverns, and there are monsters, and there are shit all over the place, but you know, how hard must it be to capture one of these things? And then just throw it in here and have it die? <laughs> not only that, this wyvern was not even the only monster that we had to fight. There's some other things in that we need to kill. Just doesn't seem practical. How do you feed these things? How do you tame them or whatever? Ah! Overthinking it. I have heard a lot of criticism lately in this game that its combat really isn't very good. I don't know, it's obvious, obviously whether something is good or not is going to be a bit of a subjective experience. One person's idea of great combat might be the person's it might be too difficult for them or something like that. But, uh, I don't know, it's not bad. It's a little simplistic and you have to do it a lot. Boris! 
especially for you, for the first time in a long time. Release Boris. It is a little repetitive having to do the same fighting over and over again. There really isn't much of a difference. There's really only a difference between humans you're fighting where you do a lot of blocking and beasts which you do a lot of dodging. It's really the only difference between any fight. Okay, so they have boars with a bear. <laughs> They're not going to be too happy if I kill this thing, I guess. Ironically, it's probably going to be an easier fight than the other one if I hadn't gotten through before this one. Although I'm getting reckless here. Bravo! Plowing Scragdom Farrah. They tell me a true bruise had come to the arena. Would you believe it? They were right. Thanks. I'd like to know who's congratulating me. <laughs> Slow, ain't ya? Came here to end me, and you've no notion what I look like. Well, we've not had enough. Now. Cleaver's dwarves are in the sewers. They've slaughtered the guards. Don't stand here like a sodden prick at a wedding. Mm. Master the men and get out those magics. And would someone please kill the blasted witcher? You heard the man! Kill him! Wow, what do you know? Cleaver happened to be attacking at the same time. And, well, I guess it's gonna work out well for us. Horson Jr., I guess, isn't as dumb as he would seem like based on his name. He knew Garrett was here to have him. Although, it was a bit of a stretch to assume that he was here to kill him. Well, that's the conclusion he jumped to. That's enough of that. And here we go. I guess he was hoping that Garrett would die in the arena here. And that didn't happen, so then he confronts him and... Well, at least we know what Horson looks like. Instead of just having to show based on his or whatever. I guess it's more important for Geralt than it is for us. Yeah, steal all their shit. One of the things I do have to give this game a little bit of shit for is its over-reliance on the assumption that the player is going to know a lot of things beforehand. Now, you saw this in a lot of different places where you had door. characters who show up. Geralt just sort of acts as though, like, oh yeah, I know this person. Whatever. Because this is, after all, based on a pre-established intellectual property, and it is in fact not even the first game in the Witcher series. It's Witcher 3. That 3 means something. So, there is some implicit assumption that the player is going to know a thing or two about what's going on, going to remember characters from previous installments. The unfortunate thing is, though, that this game is the introduction of a lot of players into this series, into this world. The Witcher 3 is, despite being the third game, the first game most players will have played. The first two Witcher games were not enormous hits, unlike 3. So, it makes some odd assumptions that I know what's going on. And it also makes some assumptions that I'm going to follow along a little bit more closely than I actually did. You're going to have characters going and uh, making appearances or you're going to have uh, Horson, the fight between Horson and Cleaver's men which honestly in my original playthrough I kind of lost track of say who Cleaver was I saw a guy go Cleaver's men are in the sewers or whatever and I honestly I didn't remember who the hell Cleaver was even though 
we had seen him a few episodes ago, the reality was I had taken some time off in this game between the point in which I we had met Cleaver and the point in which I this mission here. I stopped playing the game for about a year because of, I don't know, something else came out or whatever, and I just sort of fell off of it. I eventually got back to it, but by then, I didn't remember this somewhat unimportant character. I know it's a difficult balance that they have to make between sort of pandering to the hardcore fans so they're going to remember every character, or going to take notes even, some weird shit like that, and somewhat of the more casual fans, which aren't really going to understand a lot of, like, the underlying lore building of a series. Now, you see this a lot with, like, say, Star Trek or something like that, which has a certain number of established realities and facts based on the series, but can't rely, or shouldn't at least rely, on the idea that the viewer is going to remember every single little thing. And in fantasy series and stuff like that, it, it's also another problem. The same thing. They can't rely on the fact that every single person is going to understand every single little aspect of their pre-established story. And this game sort of falls into that trap. Not the worst I've ever seen. I was like, let's say Final Fantasy twelve is probably the most egregious in this, in which case they start spilling out proper nouns and stuff like that, expecting the player to have picked up on who the hell they're talking about. And it all just comes across as nonsense. They'll eventually be establishing what the hell they're talking about, but by then you're not going to remember a reference to a certain person or a certain group or country hours and hours later. They took me for one of Bedlam's moles. Are you? Well, kinda, yeah. So what have you kinda learned? Horson's working hand in glove with the Redanians. I don't know the details, but he's on their side. 